situation is a long and illustrious one, you can add the name Tom Brady. In an interview with Westwood One Sports Radio, Brady characterized the situation as, quote, unfortunate. He says he respects Eli's dependability, consistency, and toughness. The other name to add on to the Eli sympathy list, beside Brady, former giant and teammate of Manning's, Michael Strahan. Our own Mike Garofolo asked Strahan about Eli. Here's the guy who's been the epitome of this organization, class of this organization for so many years, 14 seasons, and with four games to go that aren't going to change the season one way or the other, you, 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 this is just not right. I, I don't think of any player, current or former, who feel like this is right. Meanwhile, Redskins offensive tackle Morgan Moses is the only offensive lineman to start every game for the team this season. Well, that iron streak is in jeopardy. Moses suffering an injured ankle in the second quarter of Thursday night's loss to the Cowboys. NFL Network insider Ian Rappaport reports Moses will have an MRI today to assess the extent of the injury. Most of us will never know what it's like to be an NFL player, but now, thanks to the new NFL experience in Times Square, we can get a taste of the NFL life. Fans can get a hands-on look to the game, including a 4D movie that puts you inside a player's helmet. Wide receiver Brandon Marshall told Mike Garofalo how cool the experience is even for a former player. NFL experience, the Hall of Fame meets Disney with a liquor license, right? <laughs> and you go in there and you're sitting in this auditorium that's probably like the best auditorium theater in the world. And then these highlights come on. Mm -hmm. The chair starts moving, snow falls down. It's ridiculous. Hall of Fame meets Disney with a liquor license. That's one way to put it. Now, Kay, if anyone follows you on Instagram, I encourage everybody to do so. We saw your Instagram stories, so don't hold back. Give us the details. It that is, you, you walk in, you walk in a fan, well, it's in the middle of Times Square, which is bananas to start with. You walk in a fan, you see yeah. what it's like to be a player, and you leave as a champion. You go through the entire experience, it's four floors, it is exactly the way that Brandon Marshall described it. He was there last night, we were all there, Garofolo. Uh, it was a great time. I cannot wait to take the guys. I can't wait either. We're going. Probably Very cool. Stay tuned. And, we'll fly, listen, get so in that private to, jet and fly out. I'm uh, I, I would love to. I'm assuming that you worked on your field goal kicking. Yes? Uh, <laughs> oh! There is not a field goal kicking situation. Oh. Okay. I worked on my touchdown passes with Landon Collins. That's on good. my IG stories. So I hear you. Go there. All right. Great stuff. Uh, we can't wait here on the East Coast and all over the country for all the incredible action coming our way on Sunday. Maybe the most exciting one of all, the Magna Carta, if you will, is the two... I'm going to call them MVP frontrunners. Go yeah. head-to-head. Seattle's uh, Russell Wilson up against Carson Wentz. So what are we looking at in this matchup, Kyle? Well, I think you said it right there. If you talk about the MVP conversation, we talk about this all the time. Sometimes it's who's having the best season. Yeah. I like to focus on the V. The M, who is most valuable to the team. I think if the Seahawks, absolutely, it's the most valuable. If the Seahawks win this game and Russell Wilson performs, I think he is at the front of the MVP conversation. Mm -hmm. I know people love Tom Brady, Carson Wentz. I do too. I think if you took Russell Wilson off this team right now, they'd have a top five draft pick. He is that good. He is that alone. It's kind of interesting. Philly has everything going on for them, and Seattle has one thing going on for them. He is the most valuable. To me, Carson wants to go into Seattle, beat them to be considered an It's so funny because I think it's a what have you done for me lately world we live in. We have crowned Carson Wentz for the last 11 weeks. If he loses in Seattle and the Eagles get one of those losses where it's like, man, this team didn't travel well, they're young. Everyone will be off that bandwagon and suddenly it's what's next. Uh, this is a big game for the Eagles. It's a big show me game because they've beaten the Bears, the 49ers, the Giants. Yeah. This is a team. This is a real team. Oh, yeah. I'm looking at the, the, the factors outside of the field, and what I mean by that is it's the 12th man, it's the crowd. We oftentimes talk about players getting their groove back, coaches getting their groove back, getting back in the rhythm. They lost two home games in a row, and that doesn't happen in Seattle. hasn't happened since, I believe, 2018. season. So I need that crowd, that 12th man, to get the rhythm back, get your groove back. People used to be scared of this place. I was there when I saw the whites of Eli's eyes and we were breaking the record for false starts. Okay, 12 man, you have the MVP lead front runner coming in to your stadium. You're getting fired up. Let's see if you can shake him up. Yeah. Here's the thing. It's a huge test for Carson. I feel like once again, 
It's called Sunday, Sunday Nighter, too. too. Adds a little bit. It's a little bit of something. Mm. It means a lot for the Seahawks, I think. The Eagles can lose this game, and I'll still think that Carson Wentz is playing unbelievably well. I still think he is a bit of a front runner for the NBA, sure. just given the numbers, the record, what he's done. But for Seattle, if they win this game, Trace, and they beat the Eagles... You gotta take them. Really, you're you're absolutely oh, terrible. Oh, yeah. Because they're that you. It's just this close, and they're gonna make one. If they lose this game against the Eagles, I think the questions do start to to fall. Of is this the end of an era? Right. For what we've seen with the Seahawks, it's, it's unfortunate. But I think that this is that kind of a game. No. Big, huge game. Yeah. All right. It is the uh, Eagles ten and one at Seahawks seven and four. As Drake says.